Hey everybody, Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share a quick video about three tablets I've been covering quite extensively that I also believe happen to represent some of the best offerings the tablet space has ever been granted. So let's start off with the far left. We've got the ASUS Transformer Pad TF701T, or what is commonly known as the Transformer, and this is the latest generation, a 10.1 inch 2560 by 1600 resolution IPS display, the same technology employed in the iPad Air, but higher resolution, which equates to higher pixel density. It's complemented by a quad-core Tegra 4 processor, which is part of ARM's A15 architecture, pretty much the top of the line right now for all tablets in the entire market. That's complemented by 2 gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of internal storage. Uh, you've got Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, which is dual band, BG and N connectivity, a front facing 2 megapixel camera, as well as an 8 megapixel rear camera. No flash, but overall an incredibly well built device that has the ability to transform with its proprietary charging port uh, into a clamshell computing device. I've covered this again extensively including the dock function. There have been some issues with the dock and that's one of the reasons this tablet has become an even better value for those of you who don't necessarily require the extra battery life, uh, full-size USB port that is 3.0 as well as uh, the actual keyboard experience uh, and full-size SD card slot that the $140 additional or I should say just accessory brings to the transformer experience. But ASUS nonetheless has put out an incredible tablet here. Uh, all of the specifications revamped, improved upon, and what retailed for $450 at launch, only in one color and one capacity, a stark contrast from what they've done in years past, uh, now is retailing for $399.99, or I should say it can be found for as little as that. So all of a sudden, a brand new tablet with top tier specs that is only a little over a month old can be found for $400 without tax even possibly, depending on you know the applicable taxes in your state. In the center, we've got the NVIDIA Tegra Note 7, which at $200 is a stark contrast, not only in terms of screen real estate going from 10.1 inches to seven inches, but we also have uh, you know, a downgrade overall in build quality. We've got aluminum Gorilla Glass here. Here, I'm not sure about what the glass is, uh, but manufactured by EVGA, and at that $200 price point, NVIDIA really taking on ASUS's other mainstay, the Nexus 7 brand, head-on. And part of this has to do with a little bit of a love-hate relationship. You know, NVIDIA used to be inside the original Nexus 7 and pretty much every Android tablet on the market. Now we've seen a lot of manufacturers, whether it's, you know, Samsung employing their own chips or Snapdragon chips pretty much taking over the industry to a degree uh, or taking on NVIDIA head-on, I should say, because they were predominantly focused on phones but now really have become a common stay uh, in the tablet sector as well. Well, the Tegra Note 7 really is all about value, much like the Nexus brand, but what you're getting here is a lot more performance. And that also depends on what you're looking to get, but at $200, you're looking at a seven point, uh, or excuse me, a seven inch display, 1280 by 800 resolution. This isn't going to wow you like the display that's found on the Nexus 7 2013, but it's all about what is actually under the hood and what has gone into designing this device. It does have an included stylus, uh, which can be used for taking notes as well as, of course, drawing and more artistic purposes. And it's not going to compare to something like the Galaxy Note lineup because this isn't a true digitizer. Rather, uh, NVIDIA is using a combination of software and hardware acceleration in order to give you almost a zero latency stylus experience. So a nice added value to have the stylus, but what it's really all about is that Tegra 4 quad-core chip, the same one found in the high-end uh, TF701T on the left is right here in the you know inexpensive Tegra Note 7. Uh, you've only got one gig of RAM, you don't have dual band Wi-Fi, but these are all very small things to give up. Uh, what these two tablets do share in common, which I left out about the ASUS, you do have a micro SD card slot for storage expansion as well as a micro HDMI out port of course for 1080p and eventually what has been promised as 4K output and that's from both of these tablets because the Tegra 4 has been touted to be able to at the very least stream 4K content let alone output it. Now in terms of what else this uh, 7 inch value tablet is all about 
uh, beyond the robust power you're getting with that Tegra 4 chip is I, I mentioned the one gig. That's not going to be a bragging right. I mean, even the Nexus that I'll get to a moment in a moment has two gigs of RAM on board. Uh, but NVIDIA really looking at it that for a stock experience with such a powerful chip and only the need to drive a much lower resolution than either of these uh, ASUS tablets, because by the way, the Nexus is manufactured by ASUS. Uh, Google basically gives that Nexus contract out on a case-by-case -case basis and partners, I think with Motorola, that's going to drastically change. But here, uh, NVIDIA making something very stock that's as close to a Nexus experience as you're going to get, but you're not going to get updates here from Google. They will still have to be uh, updated directly by NVIDIA. But NVIDIA is very aggressive. If you look at their first piece of hardware, the Shield, which I reviewed a portable Android gaming console, very similar in terms of specifications to this, but an extra gig of RAM, same 16 gigs of internal storage, uh, also a micro SD card slot uh, for storage expansion. Uh, the Shield, of course, a gaming console is not a tablet. This does have a front-facing VGA camera, which is pretty much worse uh, in class, but when you consider the price point and all the value that I've been mentioning that you get here, uh, I don't think most people will be uh, buying this tablet for its front-facing cam. The 5 megapixel camera on the other, on the back, though, is another story altogether. It's actually one of the better performers at the $200 price point and certainly competes with the Nexus that I'm going to be making my way to shortly. Uh, Bluetooth is here, uh, HDMI out, as I mentioned before, and standard micro USB for charging, unlike the transformer to my left. But again, all at $200 you're getting what potentially is a beast. And when it comes to battery life, uh, the transformer I didn't mention, you're looking at roughly 10 hours, maybe 12 hours on its own. If you bring that dock in that I mentioned before for the uh, $130, $140, you're going to be able to extend that battery life by four hours here. No dock capability, but you are looking at a solid 10 hours of use, which at that $200 price point, the actual raw performance, this really is arguably... Uh, the least expensive portable computer I've ever seen, if you can consider a mobile device a portable computer, which I think a lot of consumers can, uh, because this is one of those that really does blur the line, especially with the pen input, which even though it doesn't have a true Wacom digitizer experience, is still incredible and unmatched at this price. You will not find anything like that. And when it comes to gaming, this tablet also beats just about every other device on the market, except for NVIDIA's very own Shield, which sort of makes sense considering this is NVIDIA's own product. Uh, lastly, I want to focus on the Nexus. This is the oldest of the bunch here. Uh, originally, the 16 gigabyte uh, device was priced at uh, 230, the 32, 270, and those prices have softened. Uh, you've got a a seven inch, of course, display, much like the Nexus, uh, or excuse me, Tegra Note 7. Uh, you have a seven inch display form factor here as well, but a 1920 uh, by 1200 resolution. Uh, so a clear marked improvement over what you're going to find with the Tegra Note 7, and I think a lot of users will want. Uh, this device simply for the screen resolution and also because you're really not giving up a lot even though this is a powerhouse that in terms of processor performance uh, can't be met by what's offered in asus's and google's offering here of the nexus 7 2013 you're getting incredible or one of the best displays on the market one of the highest uh, pixel densities offered out there uh, complemented by a snapdragon uh, processor and S4 Pro, which is really under the same architecture of the S600. So you are getting still solid graphics and processor performance. A lot of people were under the um, belief that they were getting a typical S4 from uh, years past. That's not the case. Um, and that means you're getting a solid processor, two gigs of RAM, uh, of course, dual band Wi Fi here, Bluetooth. You do not have uh, storage expansion capability like you do with these tablets. And that's just part of having a Nexus device. What you do get, uh, however, is the ability to get over-the-air updates directly from Google. That means that right now you can see I'm waiting to install a brand new update, and that's the bug fix uh, for KitKat 4.221. Uh, uh, whereas here, I'm still sitting on Jelly Bean on both of these devices. Now, there's no question in my mind that both of these will see KitKat, but the Nexus 7 will outlive these tablets uh, with regard to software uh, lifespan, which many would argue equates to actual device uh, lifespan. I wouldn't necessarily say that because I think a lot of users will use tablets uh, to their own potential, and when they get tired of them or they actually die, that's when they move on, not just because they don't have the latest 
uh, software versions. Of course, I think everyone would prefer to have the latest and greatest, and that's where the Nexus 7 really does offer that. You also get other uh, enhancements that really speak to this tablet being of another generation, and also Google's goal or desired experience because you have NFC, something that is vacant from both of these tablets, especially despite the higher price point here uh, with the 10.1 inch transformer, uh, no NFC or anything like that. Also wireless charging, uh, Qi charging. So things that I wish were on these tablets are here in the Nexus 7 2013 experience, which is what makes this tablet one of the best ever made. And the same could be said of the previous generation Nexus 7, which was based around uh, Nvidia's Tegra 3, but this, tablet all around. Again, battery life as well, right in line with these, another 10-hour performer, uh, just stellar. And that's what makes all three of these great. You're looking at tablets that have incredible battery life, incredible performance, out of the box, work just as they should, and all do it at very low price points. Again, 400 right now on sale, uh, at least through B&H, and I've seen it on Amazon as well, for the 32 gig Transformer TF701. You can only pick up uh, the Tegra Note 7 manufactured by EVGA, but really created by NVIDIA from Newegg at at least its present form. And it's sold out pretty much all the time because I think they aren't making a lot of these for obvious reasons. This is a brand new field for both EVGA and NVIDIA, only their second piece of hardware, they being NVIDIA. And then finally, the Nexus 7, the most mass produced of the three of these tablets, even though Asus makes both this and the Transformer. This has much more mainstream appeal, it's very inexpensive, has an incredible feature set, really nothing to dislike about this tablet. It does also have front and rear camera capability, uh, not necessarily better uh, on the rear camera than what's found here in the Tegra Note 7, but the front-facing cam definitely better, 1.2 on the front, 5 on the back, and overall, really, all three of these are devices that you simply cannot lose with, and that's why I'm sharing all of them with you today. I think that's been clear from the beginning of the video. They represent best-in-class devices, really the maturation of the entire tablet industry, uh, and we finally can buy things, uh, at least under the Android brand, that will perform incredibly well without breaking the bank, and that can't really be said for any other tablet platform. Windows is starting to make a strong appeal, no question about it, uh, but there are still some challenges ahead. Clearly, the uh, biggest gripe for any Windows, uh, at least tablet user, that isn't working with a full version of the operating system uh, they're going to face is a lack of applications, which for some is a dire issue. Others are able to work around it in their own way. So it's really a matter of personal preference and what you need, but if you're looking for uh, tablets either in the 7-inch form factor or the 10-inch, uh, these are really, in my opinion, some of the best that you can possibly get that have ever been made and, again, at the lowest prices that you could ever imagine. And they're only going to get lower. The Nexus has been out for a while. That's why the price has softened. Uh, this, uh, the Note, always sold out, so don't expect to see too much flex in price, although it's been as low as about 190 with some coupons from Newegg, uh, even actually directly at one point, I believe it was 189 And then the Transformer, again, just I think is clearly being... Uh, dropped in price because of the dock issue. You know, that if you haven't watched my videos about the dock, go ahead and take a peek at those. Uh, but there are some issues uh, with connectivity, and as a result, I think uh, since the whole concept is to transform, it has taken a hit in sales. But overall, still as a standalone tablet, if you've watched my coverage, you know how fond I am of this. It's one of the best values and overall best tablets I've ever seen. So, Three great devices, great values. I know I've reiterated it over and over again, but this isn't something that I can often do. So that's why uh, that's what today's video was all about. Uh, if you're wondering why things like an iPad Air aren't here or a uh, Samsung Galaxy Note 10 2014, that's because they don't represent the best values. They may be some of the other best tablets in the marketplace right now, but when it comes to uh, people who actually care about what they're getting for the actual uh, price tag, at least at launch, these tablets cannot disappoint. Whereas something like the Galaxy Note uh, 10.1, someone can be in love with at 550 or 600 and someone else is just going to feel the plastic build quality or, you know, the lag associated with touch whiz that they experience is unacceptable at that price point. Here, you're not going to find those sort of complaints. And that's not a knock against the Note. Uh, the Note isn't for everyone, just like all three of these aren't for everyone. That's the beauty of Android. There literally is a tablet for just about every buyer, their needs, and what they're actually looking for in a complete package. Uh, student, business professional, casual user, family, gamer, you've got it all right here. These three tablets really do represent, in my opinion, 
every person's possible need when it comes to a tablet experience from e-reading, gaming, uh, to fully transforming into a clamshell computer with the transformer experience. So some best-in-class devices at incredible prices. Not trying to rhyme intentionally, it just happened. Uh, any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. And of course, as usual, please feel free to subscribe. Later.